Hi guys, I'm Omar Raliboy from Tapas Revolution Restaurants and I want to show you how to make a coca de requena, which uh, has no translation, but I will sort of uh, describe it as a meat focaccia or, or kind of like a British toad in the hole. We're gonna be making a dough and then we're gonna fill it with uh, lovely meats and then bake it into the oven. So to make the dough, we need obviously flour. In this case, it's a white strong flour or bread flour. Some dried yeast, a bit of salt, Spanish extra virgin olive oil, and a little bit of sugar and water as well. The meats that we are going to be using will be black pudding or morcilla de burgos in this case, which is a rice type of black pudding, but you can use anything you find. Irish or Scottish black pudding will be good. Even haggis will be even better. A lovely smoked chorizo. In this case, this is the fresh style, the one that you know is very soft and, and refrigerated. As soft as this sausage, this is just a conventional pork sausage. And then we have some lovely bacon or smoked panceta. To make the dough, we are gonna start by adding the flour into the bowl. Make a little hole in the middle, like if it was a volcano. I'm going to add the water, which is a sort of warm, tepid water in the middle, and I sprinkle the flour in the water. What I'm going to do is to start by diluting this yeast into the water, just with a couple of fingers, like if it was a whisk. I'm just going to add a little bit of sugar. This will help fermenting faster. And as well, some extra virgin olive oil. Not all, I'm going to be using all of this in the surface when I change the dough from the bowl into the worktop. So you can see I'm not integrating all the flour at the same time, I'm not mixing on the bottom of the bowl, I'm just grabbing the middle and you can see all the flour still on the sides. I'll add the salt, you don't add the salt earlier because the salt stops the yeast from activating and it's unhelpful in this case to make a proper fermentation and, and let the dough raise. So slowly, I start grabbing more and more of the flour now until I have quite sort of a sticky, chewy type of uh, dough, which you can see over here. At this point, where sort of all the ingredients have combined, I'm going to add a bit of oil into the worktop and um, just start working the dough over here working and bringing air into it. The move, really, when making any dough is to bring air inside and to fold the dough on top of each other. So what you do is you sort of stretch it and fold it over it itself. And repeat that operation as many times as you need for about five to 10 minutes until it's totally mixed. The olive oil will start integrating within as well. And I'm going to be using both hands, just so you see. So I sort of stretch, fold over itself, you have many ways of doing it. 90 degrees, stretch it out and fold it. As well, you can do it bringing it towards you with both hands. This is the easiest way. You could even do it with one hand, to be honest, but uh, I like to get my hands dirty. I'm doing a very small amount, so it's even harder when you do a small amount than when you actually use a full, uh, a full recipe. So don't be shy and do two, you can freeze one. As the oil sort of integrates into the dough, just make sure you grab some of the one that has gone over the edges and bring it in. And slowly everything will integrate and it will be quite a soft and elastic dough. Having said that, don't expect it to be soft and elastic anytime soon because when you are working the dough and bringing air into it, it creates quite a lot of tension. You know, it's when you leave it resting for five minutes when you then realize how elastic and how stretchy it can get. What you can do as well is, using your hands as a paddle, take the dough from the middle, stretch it out and fold it in. Stretch it out, fold it in. It comes without saying that any kid will love doing that, so you can give them the dirty job to do themselves. Mine loves it, actually. Okay, this is ready. You can see it's a very uh, viscous or very sticky type of dough. 
like it will be a focaccia. You know, they are quite liquid. The, per the percentage of liquid on the dough is very, very high. So I'm just going to take a bit of extra virgin olive oil, pour it on the oven tray so that I can put that dough into it. And now all we have to do is just uh, turn it upside down and spread it. You see, with the help of the oil, it will spread very, very easily. And we are just gonna let it rest over here for about an hour. And I'm just going to chop my meats meanwhile. I'll dig them in and we'll bake it in the oven. The dough of the coca has been fermenting, it's been active, it's been raising for two hours now. And what I'm going to do is just to chop a bit of all of those meats generally. Chunky pieces, and all you have to do is just press it a little bit into the coca bread. Now the chorizo. A bit of the bacon or the smoked panceta, whatever you have to hand. And the morcilla de burgos, or the black pudding. Just gonna sort of cut it in half, take the skin off. And now, just crumble it on top. A little sprinkle of salt on top, rock salt ideally and straight into the oven for at 200 degrees for about 16 to 22 minutes, depending on your oven. Looks good. All right. Take a look at that. All the fats have rendered down and sort of drip into the bread, which probably has soaked it all. That would make it very delicious. Equally, in Spain, we do cocas with escalivada, which are the roasted vegetables, peppers, aubergines, onions. You know, it's for you to pick and choose and match what you like. But this is the traditional coca de requena, full of meat and uh, porky bits, which is very delicious. And uh, let me just uh, tear apart a little bit so that you see inside. Take a look. It sort of has a bit of a focaccia look because of the amount of oil that it has. I hope you enjoy the coca de requena recipe. Try it at home, please like it, subscribe for more recipes, leave some comments on the comment box below and let us know what would you like me to cook next. We're going to be recording videos sort of uh, more regularly now, so um, for all those Spanish aficionados, uh, let, me, let me know. See you soon. Thank you.